Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Anjosi and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are back with the 101st episode of the Top 5 Weekly. This is a series where I take a look at the most popular workshop creations on Steam, analyze each one of the submissions, I discover their features and finally I test them out here in the world of Stormworks. If you're enjoying my videos, don't forget that like and subscribe button and while watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and what else you'd like to see in my future videos. With all said, Let's get straight into it and get started with this week's creations. And kicking this episode off with the first creation, we have the Passenger Zeppelin. This is a creation done by Canada Goose. Now, this is meant to be a small passenger airship. Um, pretty straightforward. It looks really cool. It's got quite a nice design to this. It looks quite realistic in terms of its actual shape. Uh, it is, of course, using Phantom Forces to lift itself up and down. Seems like he's also got some propellers on this. Um, so let's go ahead and spawn this in and see how it works here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning in the passenger Zeppelin. This looks really cool. Um, he's got a really nice shape to this. So you can see here from the front, it does look completely round like a balloon shape. Um, so quite nice. So we have a little bit of a cabin underneath here. So I'm guessing this is which be the passenger cabin. Looks like we have some engines on either side and another one here at the rear. And then going towards the back, just some actual way to go, obviously go and steer and so on and so forth. Uh, cool, let's go and see if we can jump inside this and see how it actually works. So we have a door here we can jump in. Uh, looks like we've got some passenger seats going along all the way back here. We have a little washroom, so it's got some medical equipment. And oh, it's actually a little ladder and crew only. Okay, so this takes you up into this compartment. Looks like there's a bed in here and there's a couple equipment pieces. Okay, that's pretty cool. I like this little interior. This is quite nice. Uh, let's go and close this hatch if we can. So there we go. And then we can open this door back to the passenger area. He's got a clock. Uh, we go in here. Looks like a small little radio. Okay, quite useful, of course. Uh, let's go and close this door. And then we come into the main flying compartment. So we've got engines over here. It looks like we've got mooring anchor, a mooring line in and out. We've got interior lights. We've got navigation lights. And then heaters. Okay, so Bug apparently makes the engine overheat. Okay, we have... Heading hold, altitude, we have differential thrust, and we have engine telegraph. Okay, and then just pretty much just airspeed and the compass sensor. Now, if I'm correct, we can increase or decrease altitude either using this or using one or two in the hotkeys. So we're gonna increase altitude. So there we go, you can see it's now raising up. So that's using the phantom forces there to raise that up. That's very smooth, actually. Wow, that's really good. Uh, let's go and get the engine started. So we're going to start aft, starboard, okay. And then we need to get, I'm guessing we need to get the engines going. So I'm guessing engine telegraph. You can see they're kind of like starting to turn there. Let's turn them off again. Let's put them back on. You can see they don't have any RPM. Oh, we need to get the, well, the magnetos are there. Okay, and now we just need to start them. So three. There we go. Cool. Well, that's working perfectly fine. We're moving along. Let's go and get the throttle all the way up. Oh yeah, that's working really well. It's going to increase altitude. Altitude increases so quickly in this. You can see how level it's staying also. It's doing a really good job. Oh, we need to increase the hours a little bit. And you can just pretty much just cruise around here. We can do our steering. And theoretically we could turn off one of the engines, I think, to probably steer a little bit quicker, if I'm correct. Uh, what I want to do is I actually want to loop back around here and just test out the mooring lines and see how those work. But this is really cool. It's running very smoothly. Performance-wise, it's running really well too. I don't think there's many pivots in here or anything that is obviously causing any lag, but it runs really well. It's not shaking or anything. You can see how this might handle in rough weather conditions, but I don't think you would probably use this, to be honest, in rough weather conditions. Uh, let's go and drop it down here, and we'll start bringing it down. I'm just decreasing the altitude, doing a little bit of a turn. We still got our throttle all the way up. Now, does WNS control 
Okay, so WNS doesn't really do anything. Okay, so let's get this engine throttle all the way down. Okay. Oh, we're still moving. Okay. Uh, we also got differential thrust for steering. Okay. Uh, so we're coming to a halt here. So let's go and decrease our altitude. And let's do mooring line out. Okay, so that's on the front. Okay. So we're going to bring it over there. And then we're going to turn the mooring line anchor on. Okay, and then we should be able to mooring line in, which is five. And that in theory should bring us towards that target. Yeah, there we go. And now obviously we can go and decrease the altitude even more and bring ourselves a little bit closer. Those engines are should be turning off now. Seems as though they got no throttle. I don't want to go too low because we might end up hitting the propellers on the ground. Um, but yeah, that's a really cool creation. I love how easy and clean it works. Uh, and also looks really cool. So with that said, let's go and move on to the next creation. And moving on to the next creation, we have the Royal Aircraft Factory SE5. This is a creation done by Roan. Now this is meant to be a World War I biplane, apparently known for its speed and movability. Uh, it looks really cool from the screenshots on the workshop. So let's go and spawn it and see how it flies here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning in the biplane, I love the use of the ropes here that looks really pretty cool uh, and just the overall shape she's done just a great job does look like he's got quite a lot of xml parts in terms of like xml pipes there looks like he's also got some wedges there um so yeah quite a few xml pieces all around but overall still a beautiful looking creation i'm guessing this is a hand crank button yeah it is okay let's go and squish around here so nothing really special apparently this does have a laser dogfight capability which i haven't really tested but um sounds pretty cool it looks like we have a gun sight uh we can obviously see through here we have guns which we can turn on and off i'm guessing yep okay oh yeah so you can turn that on off cool and you can alternate fire we have clock you can see these xml pieces on the side here that's why it's kind of like glitching out uh, we've got prop starter alternator fire left and right brake guns and throttle okay uh, there's nothing really else in here. There's, yeah, there's no buttons or pretty much anything. Just a whole bunch of dials for seeing a few things. So you got fuel, temperature, so on and so forth. Uh, so let's get the throttle up a bit. And then let's jump out. See if we can do cranking on that. And uh, let's jump back. Yep, so you can see that is running. Cool. Okay, and we should be moving. Yeah, we actually are. Wow. Uh, let's see if we can just steer this on the runway a bit, and then we'll get the throttle up completely and see if we can take off from here. Now, apparently, it says that we do need requires runway to take off at 30 meters per second. Okay, so we're gonna go and just loop around here, get our throttle up again, and I actually want to just turn that on. Okay, and you can see the laser there, and that's how you do your laser dogfighting. It's a pity. I don't know if the buzzing is to represent actually firing or hitting a target. Because uh, obviously if it's hitting a target, it's hitting the propellers. Uh, I haven't actually, as I said, I haven't tested out the laser dogfighting thing before. So let's go and increase our throttle here. So full throttle. Along the runway. Come on, let's go up. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's easy enough. Okay. Cool. Seems to want to lift its nose quite a bit, um, but I think once we... Okay, there we go. So it's kind of almost... It's almost got like a sticky pitch to it. I'm guessing maybe he's not using a gyro. I could be wrong. Um, but overall, yeah, it's... Oh, it's quite sensitive. Or it's a roll. Okay, let's see how well does it. Yeah, it works quite well actually. A little bit sensitive to my taste, but once again, that's just my opinion. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Interesting to see. Ooh, this is yeah, very very sharp. I'm guessing very good for <laughs> for obviously doing dogfights and things. Um, seems pretty fast too. What is our current speed? 
60. Okay, not bad at all. RPS is quite nice and low. Temperature seems around the 70s. Uh, we are guzzling fuel down. So, we're, yeah, we're at like half tank, just less than half tank already. And we've just taken off from crater base. So it doesn't last too long. But I think the, yeah, the crater said there's quite a little, little bit of fuel in this. Um, it's not built as a fuel efficient aircraft. Um, but yeah, a cool little biplane. Now, something we don't see that often here in Stormworks. Uh, so let's go and move on to the next creation. And moving on to the next creation, we have the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. This is a creation done by Thales. Now, Thales is quite well known for his planes already, so I expect this one to be absolutely incredible. Now, from the workshop, it looks really, really cool. Uh, it seems like he's got a huge dash on there with a bunch of different screens and screen upon screens and different cool things. Um, so let's go and spawn in and see how it flies here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning in the Cessna, this is really small and compact. I love how small this is looking. It's looking like a real size Cessna. Um, so really pretty cool. Looks like he's got a rotor. This is a helicopter rotor here in the front. Uh, along with that, seems like we have engine hatch. Ooh, that's pretty cool. So engine there, we have a bunch of equipment and things that you would need. Is there another hatch? No, there's no hatch on the side. Okay, uh, let's make our way around. Seems like we have cargo. Oh, wow, okay, so just some equipment in there. Uh, moving around, looks like there's some XML edited blocks uh, going around the creation. Some nice paint block detail, and that's pretty much about it from the outside. Obviously, a wind sensor there, a light on that side, and just some navigation lights and things. Cool, let's jump inside. So, can I jump? There we go. Okay, so before we actually check out the this let's see so we've got pilot seat we've got passenger seat and then another two passenger seats and a fast extension and a heater wow okay so very compact and busy interior i like it uh, okay so let's understand what so we've got battery on off we have throttle waypoint we have all of our lights so we have dome lights navigation strobe landing uh, we have altitude hold, GPS, autopilot, we have screens and engine. Okay, so engine just goes and turns itself on. Altitude hold system there, Ooh, really nice. Okay, so you can see screen within screen. He's obviously hidden that somewhere within the creation. Uh, we've got another screen and screen there, really cool. And then just a comm radio, nice, really nice. And then hotkeys, brakes, flaps, uh, also, we have the flaps on there for takeoff. Uh, gyro stabilizer. I'll get that on for now. Um, cool parking brake. Heater works only in the cold and push to talk. Okay, so parking brake is there any indicator. Oh, there is. Okay, cool. So he's got those on screen too. Uh, so let's go forwards a bit. Let's see if we can take off. See how this actually works on the runway here. Seems like it's doing pretty well so far. Yeah, so we'll just line ourselves up on the runway. Yeah, so far very clean. Scroll in a bit. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get throttle up. So using the up arrow on the keyboard. Keep going, keep going. The flap should be doing the works now and doing its own lifting here. When we get to enough speed. There yeah, it is, clear. Cool, that was pretty seamless and easy actually. Uh, let's get the flaps off. Nice, look at that. Probably get the brakes on for the wheels. Okay, so it only stops a few of them. Interesting. That's a really nice creation. Uh, let's try the alt halt so we can do, let's say what, 200? I guess this is feet, okay. Uh, so alt hold. Yep, there we go. So we're at 200. Let's get our autopilot waypoint in. So over there. Or then autopilot waypoint. Yep. And it should be turning itself. Nice. We probably are going to be hitting that wind turbine. Are we going to miss it? I think we are. Cool. Um, so it's nice that it doesn't just throw you straight away towards the waypoints. It actually slowly banks you. And obviously... I'm quite a fan of that. I do it in my creations too. Um, he's done a really good job with that, I think. And you can see now it's slowing, slowly going there. 
yeah, just overall very clean, very nice and easy. I didn't see anything about refueling anywhere. I could be wrong. I might have missed it. Uh, there might be something hidden somewhere for refueling. Um, but yeah, just a just a real lovely, lovely little creation. Really nice. Obviously, once again, used a lot of XML blocks throughout, but uh, you have to do that if you want to get blocks kind of in the way that you need them to be. Uh, let's just get this off and this off. Let's see if we can decrease our throttle. I just want to see how well this glides. So flaps. Oh wow, that glides quite well. Uh, let's get a little bit of throttle here. Decrease our throttle a little more. Oh yeah, that is really good. Brakes on. That was very easy. Very, very easy. A lovely, lovely little creation. Let's go and move on to the next one. And moving on to the next creation, we have the Yasin MM Submarine. This is a creation done by Captain Buki. Now, this is meant to be a Russian submarine that he's gone and done. Apparently, it's got some torpedoes on there and looks pretty cool. So let's go and spawn it and see how it works here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning the submarine in, it's relatively small in comparison to what I was expecting it to be. Um, but it looks really cool. I love how it's painted on this black here and actual detailing looks really cool. He's used a lot of wages on here, which obviously makes submarines look really much better than what uh, we used to do with old wages. Um, so overall, pretty straightforward on the outside. Nothing really I can see. Two docking doors, obviously a propeller at the back. We got some rudders here in the front. Let's see if we can get inside this. Now there is a little bit of lag that I can see. I'm not too sure. I'm guessing it's the torpedoes that are doing it. I'm not 100% on it. Uh, but let's see if we can get up and inside here somehow. Maybe climb, because we have these doors here. There's not really any buttons. So let's see if we can, well, there's something here. With the light, okay. Uh, let's go and get up in here. Cool. Oop. Okay, so we have open and close. We have the left and right. We have mic. Uh, we have lights. Okay, and then is there anything else? I guess there's a door here that we can go and open and jump up into, I'm hoping for. Uh, let's use the hand. Oh, can I use that handle? Almost seems like... Oh, there we go. So now I can climb up inside. Uh, let's go and clo close that. There we go. Uh, we've got light. We have disconnect escape pod. Okay, so this is like a little escape pod here. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, we have disconnect escape pods. We have another door here. And then we're actually inside the submarine. So we have to try and figure out what everything is in here. Uh, let's make our way around. So, is there any way to get some lights on inside? So, open, okay, so open, close, we'll close the cloning tower. Any option for, we've got nav lights, we've got inner hatch. I guess we can close the inner hatch, which closes that door there. Uh, okay, so there must be a central panel somewhere for, oh, there we go, lights, cool. So we've got red lights, blue lights, and white lights. So in here, it looks like we've got a navigation system. Uh, we have a little radio in here also, quite useful. Uh, a door which goes into mic, toggle, SW, and on, off. What is this? Okay, so this looks like a radar or sonar of some sort. Uh, let's go and jump into, try to jump into this area. Not the easiest. Try and do that. There we go. Okay, so in here, wow, these are a lot of buttons. Okay, so it's like a oh, it's a Morse code system. That's quite nice. Class. Close that door. Uh, what is over here? So we actually can go down a bit. We will radar mast and lockable button on off. Okay, so radar. Okay, uh, we have microphone, some. Firefighting extinguishers and things, some equipment here at the back, left and right, up and down and on off. Is this periscope of some sort? Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, some ropes and things. We've got another hatch, more equipment. Well, wow. uh, we can go carry on further down. I'm not a huge fan of these, of this. I would have preferred him to put another wedge here because it is quite hard because your character jumps a full length and then it becomes really hard to jump through these areas here. Like you can see here how I'm kind of struggling here, even though I'm crouched. Um, it might be better if I jump and then crouch. There we go. Uh, cool. So another radio. Looks like we've got escape hatches, modules. 
a uh, little crew seating area, another door that goes down. So we'll check that out in a few minutes. Uh, what's in here? Okay, so medical room. Pretty much got everything you would want inside here. Yeah, looks like a toilet of some sort. Cool. Oh, uh, just a wash sink, sorry. Wow, okay, we got even more. So these look like the missile silos, if I'm correct. And we'll make our way down one level in a few seconds. Some more equipment. This door, let's... There we go. Oops, no, I need to be on that side. Okay, so let's go and go through here. So I'm guessing engines. What is through here? Uh, electrical engines through here. Some equipment. Okay. So everything seems to be accessible, which is good because obviously if you need to make any repairs or anything. Uh, let's see if we can go through here. Oh, that's not good. I can't close that door. Okay, well, I'm going to open that one. Uh, let's see if we go down one level. So down through here and we have just some more equipment and things. Uh, these are the missiles. Okay. Cool. Let's make our way back up. Okay. Let's go through this door over here. Carry on going along. We have another small little door, which we need to be on the other side for. I think. Oh, no, we can't be on the other side for that one. Uh, okay. So we need to go in there and then... Oh, there's another hatch there that I wanted to check out. Okay, so some torpedoes. Mm, okay, interesting. So we have the doors for the torpedoes, loading, firing, pretty much all the buttons you can imagine. I'm guessing this is controllable from the top. And we're going to go through the instructions. He has got quite a few instructions for this. Uh, so once we get up into the or in the bridge area there, we'll check out the instructions. I just want to see what else we have. Uh, looks like a big map system. Okay, pretty cool. Sonar, ELT beacon. That's cool. Huge map table there. Uh, another map table there. Looks like we have the lights. So these are the bilge pumps. Full blow, full blow, full blow. Yeah, okay. Uh, cool. Power. Okay, so I'll leave power on. We got tube one, tube two. Got screens on here. So the torpedoes. Okay, fire systems. Looks like this would be our driving area. Stabilizers. Can't go any more forward than this. Um, turbines on off. Main turbine control. Depth. Okay. Cool. So we need to close all the hatches, which as far as I'm aware, we have done uh, already. Cool. We need to... Let's see. And then we need to fill up the ballast. Uh, no sure ballast configured. Okay, so... Fill all ballast. Imagine surface, bilge pumps. I guess we need to get the bilge pumps on. Cool. So that means we are going now. Great. So we're now filling the ballasts. Front ballast, off ballast, front and aft. Okay. Fill all ballasts. Yep, that's what we're doing. Uh, depth hold. So set the depth. Uh, only positive set depth. Okay. So depth is over there. So I guess we could do, what, five? Uh, periscope is... Point four. Okay, so let's do that. So zero point four seven. Yeah, well, that's what he says here. Um, it says positive only. Okay, so let's do four point seven. So that should then sink us to periscope level in theory. Uh, cool. You can see the ballast is still filling, which is great. Uh, then that's pretty much about it to be honest uh we can obviously go and get everything started so let's get oh uh, no that's reverse let's get turbine on okay we are moving i can confirm that so let's do right to the left let's try and get out of the dock here Yeah, do full hard look right to the left. And okay, we should be clear of the dock now. So let's go and bring that to about zero. Cool. And we are going down. We can probably get that down a bit. Okay. So the turbine is on, which is great. Battery is fantastic. We have auto depth. Let's put the auto depth on. Switch control rudder. Um, Switch control rudder's depth. Okay, interesting. 
WS is different trim. Okay, we are still dropping down and we should be dropping down to periscope level. If I'm correct, it means that we got the depth on, which is 4.7. Okay. Uh, then we have the torpedoes that we can go and use. So he's got some instructions for that. So we need to in bearing set the course. Okay, so that would be over here. We need to obviously get this all on. So let's get uh, turn this on and then we can do bearing. So what is our current bearing at the moment? Uh, bearing a zero at the moment. Okay, so let's do what 150. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, so bearing 150, so a little bit to the left there. Uh, power's on already, perfect. Great, what else do we need here? So come sensor W and S buttons to set the depth. Okay, so you can see the depth there. So 20 meters, five meters, etc. Perfect, so we're gonna set it to, let's do five meters, because that's more or less where we are now. Uh, which is cool. Use the AD button, button, obviously, to move it left and right. Cool. So we can move it over to the left there. So target. Cool. Got that. Um, what else do we need to do? Open the front covers, torpedoes, tubes. Uh, this can be done from the torpedo control station. Hold open and close. Okay. So yeah, plus minus. Off. Open close. So we need to hold this apparently. There we go, so tube one is ready, and then we have tube one fire. Cool, so let's do it. There it goes, and it's going and heading off in the direction we wanted it to. Nice! Very cool, we are still at a little bit of a level. That could have been, maybe we don't need that. Ah, uh, did I just feel, I feel all ballast. Build trumps are on. Everything is here and correct. I'm guessing it'd probably be better if we were actually moving, to be fair. Uh, so let's go forward a bit. Actually, we do move quite quickly. We should be auto depthing soon. Yeah, let's check out the, where is the periscope? Periscope was all the way back, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Okay. Um, cool. You can obviously have a lot of time playing around with this, and obviously investigating all these different controls. I can't go through absolutely everything. Unfortunately, I can't learn all of this in a few seconds or minutes looking at this creation, but it is really cool. Uh, and I definitely recommend you guys go and check it out and play a little more with it and obviously investigate all these different cool features in here. It seems like it's got tons of cool features in here, uh, which can be a lot of fun to play with. Um, but yeah, lovely creation. Let's go and move on to the next one. And moving on to the last creation, we have the crude oil tanker Helen RW. This is a creation done by the hobo named Walt. Now, absolutely incredible looking and beautiful looking actual oil tanker here in Stormworks. Uh, it seems like it's got a ton of different features on there, weather stations, radars, autopilots. Uh, there's a life boat at the back. Absolutely just really beautiful. So let's go and spawn in and see how it works here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning this creation, you can see just the size of it. It is absolutely massive uh, and it's really beautifully detailed. You can see it just going along the hull here and I'm actually in free cam mode so I can actually show you guys all the different types of detailing along this. Uh, at the front here, we've got this rust here. Uh, we've even got these paint blocks here for obviously bow thrusters and obviously all the different things. Anchor system, uh, your water line on the other side. We've got tug points over there. Oh man, just looks really cool. Nice little crane on there. You can see all the deck with all the little de detailing. We'll take a little walk around there later on. Uh, the superstructure, and then we obviously have the actual lifeboat here at the back, and even the writing in there. And he's done a great job using the wedges. Let's just try and get back to it. Um, you can see, look at that from underneath the actual vessel. Looks really cool, really, really nice. Um, great, so let's just go out of free cam now and let's just take a little walk around. We'll start at the front uh, and then see what's on here. A little bit of lag, obviously I'm at the dock, so that does produce a little more lag. So we've got anchor system uh, here at the front. So nice job with the detailing on the deck. 
Um, yep, so these are controls for the anchors on either side. We even have a door to go, I guess a placeholder for now. Uh, let's have a look on the deck. So just a whole bunch of pipes and things. I'm guessing there is a actual port here for you to go and yep. So you can see there we can go and do pump there. That's a water pump. Uh, we also have cargo, so we can do the crude oil in and crude oil out at the same time, which is pretty cool. I've got cargo maintenance hatches. Oh, that's quite interesting. Let's go all the way down here. So we've got some equipment in there and hatch unlock. So what does that unlock? This hatch maybe? Okay, and then we're actually inside one of these containers. That's nice. It's cool that you can walk around in these. And this, if I'm correct, is just one of them. Uh, so let's just go back up again and then we'll just lock this hatch and close it. I don't want anything to I accidentally <laughs> sink the ship. Okay, so let's get out of there. Uh, we're going to close the hatch and then lock it. And then we're going to go up the main jet. Got some equipment there also, so if in case you damage something in there. And also it's got uh, scuba diving gear, so if you want to go swimming in the oil for some reason. Um, or maybe you have damage you need to go in there. It's pretty cool. Uh, equipment and here at the top looks like... We have a water cannon. I don't know if that works. I think it could just be there for decoration purposes. Uh, wow, tons of equipment in here with pretty much everything you would ever need. Uh, we've got a crane. Nice. Okay. Uh, we got a gangway that we can go and bring up. And this actually folds away, which is really cool. I think there's another one on the other side that we're going to close also before we set off and sail here. Okay, can we... Okay, so we're going to have to jump past this. And there we go, we can go and close that. Cool. Okay, so he's also got some more um, actual parts here for cargo. Okay, so this is diesel. Okay, so diesel only, interesting. So I wonder if that goes into the fuel tank or if that's for refueling. Uh, we've also got another thing here. I'm guessing that's just a decoration point. Uh, looks like we've got some equipment going along there, like firefighting station, diesel only, and Okay, so this is what, diesel in those tanks, and then in these tanks were crude only? Oh, cargo, so that's crude, yeah. Okay, interesting. So then guess those tanks there are for the actual ship to power itself. I could be wrong. Uh, but cool. Love the deck and all the detailing. Uh, let's go and just take a little walk around the outside of this vessel before we head into the superstructure and then possibly down to the engine room. Okay, so we've got the big lifeboats. I like how he's done this along here. So anchor parts, nice fuel tanks on the side. Okay, so we have a staircase. Goes all the way to the top. Close that door. Uh, let's go and see if we can get inside the superstructure here. Okay, so there's a door here in the front. It's got no smoking sign over there. Definitely needed. Okay, we have a galley. Oh, that's very nicely detailed. Get some lights on. Very nicely detailed. Cool, what do we have in here? So we have captain's quarters. Nice, and what's in here? So guest rooms, cool. Uh, to the engine compartment. Okay, so I guess we're gonna go check out the engine room. So we got a little staircase that goes down. Ooh, some nice big engines. Can you imagine in a few weeks, hopefully, this will be replaced with modular engines. Really cool, let's get some lights on. Uh, yeah, nice big marine engines, beautifully detailed. Looks like we've got the firefighting equipment. Uh, and we have the main engine control room. I don't think we need to do anything from down here, but it's cool that you can come down here. Fire suppression systems. Nice. Okay, we've got a staircase over here. So I think we came down the other one. Oh, you can see that big drive shaft. Oh, that's nice, man. Lovely detailing. I think we came down the other staircase. So we're going to go up this one. Oh, there was lights there. Okay, cool. Okay, let's close that off. Uh, we've checked that one, we've checked that one, we've checked all that. Uh, what is through here? Washroom. Okay, just a little toilet. Uh, next level, let's get the lights on. So, we've got some equipment there. What is in here? Electrical room. So, nice. Just electrical breakers and things. You can go turn off. We've got storage room. Uh, nice little storages, boxes and things inside there. Uh, washing machine, accommodation 12. 
washroom, accommodation 11, 10. So we've got quite a lot of rooms in this superstructure. I'm guessing this is going to be more accommodation up here. So kind of like a copy of the deck below. Uh, yeah, accommodation, accommodation, accommodation. I think they're all pretty much the same. Nicely detailed also. Washing machines again, more equipment if you need it. And I think we're up in the bridge. Yeah, we are. So bridge lights. We have, what is this? So it looks like a weather screen. Nice. Uh, nice little mat there. We've got some screens and things. We'll come back to the bridge in a few seconds. Just want to see what else we have. Uh, some equipment on the side here. We got the wing so we can go and get compass backlights and we can do bow thrusters. So very useful for getting out of docks and things. Uh, we got door to get in and then we have our funnel there. It's a lower deck staircase. Okay. So that was, I'm guessing that was a staircase that we saw earlier on. Uh, and then we have the mast and things here at the top. Nice. Okay. So let's get into the bridge. Oh yeah. We also have the lifeboat here at the back. Very useful. And really cool. Okay, let's go and get into the bridge and let's get this started up and see if we can get it moving here. Now, I don't think there's any starting up procedure from correct. I didn't see any um, on the workshop. So I'm guessing it's going to be relatively easy to get it up and running. It's done a great job with detailing here. You've got rudder, compass, radio, clocks, navigation lights there. You can get those on nice and easy. Bridge lights, deck lights, speed, water pumps. What are water pumps for? Are there water cannons anywhere? I didn't see any water cannons on here, except those ones there, but I don't know if those work. work. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. So water pumps, I don't know what water pumps do. Okay, oh, okay, so this must be for the engine then. Okay, so water pumps and fuel pumps for the engine. And then we have start the engines. Yep, so engines are now started. We've got bow thrusters, reverse, battery, gangways, GPS system, monitor power. So we've got draft, we've got temperature, we've got the horror system, and then same on this side. No, we've got the navigation system, another horror screen, and draft again. And, and you can obviously change this to depth and a few other things. There's a nice job with that too. Uh, cool, let's get this going. So we at the mast or at the helm here uh let's get throttle up so rps you can see the rps there speed i'm expecting this thing to take a while for it to gain a little bit of speed here uh, it's doing pretty well big propeller here underneath it's slowly moving you can see this is quite a bit above the water line i didn't see anything about a ballast system anywhere is interesting uh no he doesn't have any ballast this is just for weather yeah there's no ballast system unless it's on the engine room or something cool what are our tech work lights foremast lights spotlights work lights instrument lights and then bridge lights which we already have on uh bar thrust the left yep that is actually working can't confirm that um, so yeah, just really nice little creation. I really like this. Uh, it's very clean on the designs and it seems like it just works. Uh, which you guys know I'm a huge fan of. Uh, very simple but very detailed creations at the same time. And yeah, I guess you could have a lot of fun with this. Obviously going and doing some roleplay missions. Going and selling and buying crude oil and things like that. Could be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah. A lovely creation to go and end this episode off with. As always, I hope you have enjoyed this and found some entertaining and informative as always. And until next week, we'll see you very soon.